Hey, how's it going? Here's our project for today. It's an adjustable book rack. The centerpiece slides back and forth to adjust for however many books you have. And the fun thing is that this is put together without glue, nails, or screws of any kind. It simply uses these two dowels that go across the bottom. And then on the ends, you can see there's little pins that go through holes in the dowel. And so it can be disassembled and packed away. I'm doing this project for a group of students at school. And if they go away to college, this thing can break down and be packed away pretty easily and then put back together very quickly. You could even do this project with some simple hand tools. I'm not going to do that today. We're going to use some power tools today. But just with a handsaw and a drill, you can put this together. So here's a little bit of a beauty shot so you can see what it looks like inside the house. So I think you'll do a great job with this. So let's get started. So here are the basic pieces of wood that we're going to use for this project. Two different dowels. This is a quarter inch dowel. And this is a three quarter inch dowel. And this is a piece of what is called one by six at the store. This happens to be pine. We're gonna use some inexpensive wood for the student project to hold the cost down. But when you see this lumber at your local hardware store or big box store, this is called dimensional lumber. And that's a little bit of a misleading term. What this means is this would be advertised on the rack there as being a one by six but it's actually not one inches by six inches. Those numbers are for this wood before it gets milled to size. So it's going to lose a quarter of an inch on thickness and it will lose a half an inch on the width. So really this is three quarters of an inch thick and it's five and a half inches across. So five and a half inches wide by three quarter inch thick. And that's what they call one by six. And that's what we're gonna to use today. Also, you can see the grain here. If you can imagine these growth rings in the tree, you can see how this wood would be standing up this way. And each of these lines here is a growth ring. And that means that when it's cut like this with the uh, circles here, this wood is going to actually twist a little bit as it gets older. It's going to cup and it'll move just a little bit so but for this project we don't really care about that this knot here this is where a branch grew out of the tree trunk okay well let's get started we well, here's some quick plans that i drew up we got a lot of traffic going by this morning so i apologize about all of the automobiles and the noise we're going to need two of these tall panels, five and a half inches by eight inches, and one short panel, two and a half inches by five and a half inches. And you can optionally clip the two top corners on each of the panels. We're going to be drilling a hole here and here, and here and here in each of these panels. The holes are three quarter inch in diameter and they're placed one inch from the two side edges, center to the edge, and three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. So the center of each hole would be one inch in, three quarter inch up, same on this panel. And all three panels should have the holes in exactly the same place. We'll also need two dowels, three quarters of an inch in diameter. 16 inches long and we'll put a quarter inch hole in the end of each one five eighths inches in from the end and then we'll need four quarter inch dowel pins that are inch and a quarter long okay so let's get started all right i laid out the lines on our one by six board this will be the short two and a half inch panel these two sections are waste. I put an X there. And these two are going to be our tall 8-inch panels. 
So let's take them over to the saw and start cutting. I'll be using a standard run-of-the-mill chop saw power miter box to make these cuts. And this has a 10-inch blade on it, but these aren't really designed to cut a piece of wood exactly this wide. Once you get five and a half or six inches, at least on my saw, it's not able to easily cut that. I'll point it out to you as I drop the blade down into its bottom position. You can see it doesn't quite come to the bottom of the board that we're trying to cut. It leaves that little edge. So you have a couple of options. One is to very carefully raise the front of the wood up as you finish your cut. And the other is to actually place a temporary piece of wood underneath the one that you're cutting like this. And that way when the blade comes down you'll see that you're higher up on the blade itself and it will cut cleanly through the wood and it's even better if the scrap piece of wood is close to the blade so you don't get as much tear out okay uh, the other thing is when you get a board from the store you probably always want to trim the end yourself so that you know it's a nice smooth and straight cut and not use the factory end of the board all right so let's make our cuts before i get things cut up just a quick word about safety, although this is not a tutorial on how to use a chop saw, but you want to keep one hand on the work away from the blade and you want to put a lot of pressure on the work so it doesn't move around. And when you cut, I know these are called chop saws, but you don't want to make a chopping cut. You want to make a nice smooth cut and then leave the saw down until the blade stops. So let me show you uh, an example of that. Okay, if you're tempted to release the blade, sometimes the teeth can catch the work and they can flip the work up or they can even mess up the edge that you've cut. So uh, you'll want to watch your hands at all time. One hand on the saw, one hand over here on the work away from the blade. Eye protection and ear protection. Okay. I mark the 45s on each piece to be cut off and I marked them on both sides and that allows me to flip the wood and not keep moving the saw. So I think you'll see what I mean in just a second. Let's go ahead and set our saw up for 45 degree cuts. And I like to have the saw pitched away from me it's safer so when I put especially the small piece we want to cut the long way so by having it marked on both sides I can simply flip the piece this way to make both cuts and it's a lot safer that way and I don't have to keep changing this off so let's go ahead and make our cuts Alrighty, let's cut our two 16 inch long dowels. And because I want them to be 
very close to the same length. I'm going to make one final trim cut with both of them in the saw at the same time. Okay, finally we have to cut our four small pins out of the quarter inch dowel. And so let's do that right now. You may find that when we cut this, this end piece tends to go flying. And if that's a problem, you can always take a piece of blue tape and just sort of tape it to the saw so that it can't escape too far. All right, we have our wood pieces cut out, our two tall panels, our one short panel, the four pins, and the two dowels. So it's time to mark for drilling some holes. So I've marked the two positions for our large diameter hole, a three quarter inch hole, three quarters of an inch up from the bottom of our tall end, and one inch from the side, one inch, three quarters and we're using what's called a Forsner bit it's a bit that has a point in the center cuts a big circle and it happens to leave a flat bottom although that part of it is not as important today and if you have a drill press that's great you can get nice straight holes when you drill you should also have a piece of scrap wood so you don't drill into your bench top or in this case my table saw and you want to make sure that the drill is straight up and down when you drill. So you put the point on your mark. And if you have trouble seeing what is straight up and down, which is always the case because your eye is not centered on the drill usually, you can have a friend and you can watch it in one axis and the friend can watch it in the other. Or you can take a little scrap of wood and hold it up next to the cut and that will allow you to see what is truly vertical. Okay, so let's go ahead and drill our holes. Now this next step is pretty important. We want these holes to be exactly aligned for each piece, otherwise our dowel rods will pinch and it won't work so well. So now that we've drilled our two holes in one of our pieces, we're going to use this as the template to drill the other holes. So we'll take another blank and we'll set this on top and we'll line up the bottom and the sides. And now we will drill down into our second piece from the top piece. Okay? The last holes we need to drill are in our large 3 quarter inch, 16 inch long dowels, 5 eighths of an inch from each end. So we want four holes. And I'm going to start by using a small drill bit and make a pilot hole. So finally we're going to have to drill out for our quarter inch pins and we'll use a larger quarter inch drill bit. But this drill bit will want to tear the wood quite a bit. So here's a little trick. Um, we want to keep this pressure, good pressure down on our backing board there so it doesn't tear out the bottom. But for the top we're actually going to put the drill in reverse and we're going to drill backwards for just a few seconds to mash a little socket in there for the drill bit and then when we change direction and drill for real going the right way it should tear out much less okay so backwards at first push down a little bit and then forwards on the drill and down here we go can you see the little indentation there Okay. 
much less tear out. Very good. Okay, let's check a couple of things finally here. We want to make sure that the large dowel slips through our hole okay. And when you buy the dowel, you may want to make sure that it's exactly or slightly under three quarter inch in diameter. Sometimes they're a little fatter and that's going to give you a lot of trouble when you try and slide this piece. Okay, so make sure that fits. And then let's just dry fit for the small pins to make sure that it will slide in and out of the hole. You want it somewhat tight, but not so tight that you have to wham it with a hammer and not so loose that the pin falls out completely. And how you adjust that, hopefully it'll be just a little bit too tight. And you can take your drill bit and just ream the hole out a little bit. Just wiggle it back and forth and check. It's just a little bit too tight. That's going to fit in there nice and snug and it'll be easy to push on through. All right, everything is cut to size. We've checked the fit on all the pieces. Now it's time for some sanding and we don't want to shortcut this part of the project because it really makes a difference in how the final product turns out. Remember sandpaper, it puts tiny scratches in the wood. That's how it does its work. So we always want to sand with the grain, never across the grain, okay? We're gonna start with 150 grit and then we'll go over it again with 220 grit. If you have a power sander and you know how to use it, all the better, but sandpaper works just great by hand. One thing we want to do in addition to smoothing everything out is we want to break down all of these sharp edges because they don't feel good when you touch them and any finish that we use on the wood won't stick to that knife edge very well. So we're going to smooth that down and maybe even put a little tiny bevel on all those edges and then we'll talk about finishes. Okay, so let's go. Okay, well we're all sanded up and ready for some finish. So let's get this place vacuumed up and all the wood wiped down. The finish I did on the first book rack that you saw at the beginning of this video was kind of a chocolatey brown. I'm feeling in kind of a, an espresso mood today, so we're going to go with this uh, water-based espresso finish, which is a lot blacker than that. Already I put two coats of that dark espresso stain on all these pieces of wood and now I need to seal it. In this case I'm going to use a spray lacquer because that's what I have handy but um, a water-based poly would work just great as well. Well after four coats of finish our project is done and I hope you had as much fun building yours as I did building mine. Remember that every day is a gift, and out of the billions of organisms that have ever been on this planet, there's only one you. I'll see you later.